go ahead and open up the public hearing session of the Warrenton Board of Aldermen meeting for Tuesday, July 21st, 2020. Uh, first item up will be the Warren County Handicap Services SP-135. Board of Aldermen, for your consideration tonight for the, for the first public hearing, we ask for the review of the site plan application for the Warren County Handicap Facilities to be located at 26321 Drive Fork Road. I ask that the ordinance of the City of Warren to be made part of the record by reference, the comprehensive plan of the City of Warren to be made part of the record by reference, and the packet shown as SP-135 on the agenda be made part of the record by reference, which includes the publication notice of tonight's public hearing. That is posted in a Warren County record. Any questions on that? All will be duly noted. Anybody like to speak on that? We we will be discussing some of this later on in the meeting as well for the handicap services. I believe it is on a bill later on, and we do have that on the agenda. But if you'd feel you can come up and speak now. When you come to the podium, just state your name, please, for the record. My name is John Orney. My wife and I live at the house on 109 Dry Fork Road, which is at the corner of uh, Dry Fork Crossing and Dry Fork Road. Our concern is the water from being discharged from the old catch basin uh, on the north side of our property. I think it's on the south side of the mayor's house. Um, the water, our initial concern was will there be an increase in water coming down the from the new building since you're going from sod covering to blacktop metal roof where water runs all faster and uh, currently the water runs out of that old catch basin across the back corner of our lot for about oh, 60 or 70 feet and each year we've been there the ditch has gotten deeper as more dirt washes out from under the rock, more of the smaller rock leaves. And when we bought the place, there was a, a section of dirt that had been washed away, and I, I put some limbs in there to help hold it, and that's kept it from getting any worse. But the limbs need to be removed, and, and that drain area needs to be relined with large rock so it doesn't wash away. And of course, the other alternative is to extend the drain pipe and, and put it underground but uh, for now we would be happy with some large rock put back in that in that channel coming out of that drain um, that pretty pretty well uh, describes everything we were concerned with we do live and there was discussion here tonight saying that well, that drain dumps out into the county. Well, our house, the house south of us that is uh, Roush, and the house not southwest, there's three houses there. Chain Bungies on the far west. We all zoned R1, which I think is one acre. Each of us have a one acre lot. And our lots were platted from the subdivision to the west, which is out in the county, uh, Falling Leaf Lane. So we are actually in the city, and uh, but we are not a member of the homeowners association that's on Drive Fork Crossing. So we're kind of out here fighting for ourselves, asking for some rock in that ditch. I, I estimate two to three big loads and little excavator time would smooth it up pretty nice. May take some dirt too, I don't know. I'm not an expert on looking at something and telling how much it needs. I just know from having built a few driveways and ponds and things that it needs rock. Thank you for your time. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Anyone else? Yes. Sure. Mr. Mayor. Can we ask the clerk to put up the the uh, site plan so we can kind of see where property owners are talking about, so we can see where this gentleman lives and That'd be reference fine. to the site? Would that be it would be helpful to me? 
And Neil, the, excuse me, is this is the new revised plan where things were changed around yes. for stormwater purposes, things like that, correct? So with this one, I don't think you're going to be able to but see. But you're not going to be able to see those lots that are but, further down. But yeah. this is the revised plan. That's okay. Correct. Yes, because the additional inlet is down there. Okay. also received 23 letters uh, for um, the Warrington, um, uh, um, sheesh, sorry, it was a long drive. I've been driving all day. Uh, so the Warren County um, Handicap Association, yes. Um, so I'm going to read this first letter, and I have 22 additional letters just like that that are for, um, for this project. Um, to who it may concern. My name is Kimberly Hewlett, and I, I've, I've lived in Warren County for the last 24 years. Excuse me? What? Oh, I proudly raised these three children in this community. My children are growing up now. One has moved out and remains in Warren as a Warrington resident, and my two daughters are now growing up and live at home with me due to having significant disabilities. I want to express how grateful that I am for all of the services provided at the WCH, the Warren County Handicap Services, and how our life would be would not be as fulfilling without them. Sarah is 26 and her disabilities has caused her to deteriorate over the last several years. And due to Sarah is and due to that Sarah is going to the Choices Day program at the WCHS. This is a valuable program, not only for Sarah as she gets to interact with other peers and learn new skills, but I know she is safe. I can go to work each day to support those two girls knowing that my daughter is in a safe environment where she is loved and cared for. WCHS additionally provides us with a respect so I have a, a break when I need it and my girls would tell you that the best part of all the, acti all the activities that they do, um, they also go through the Special Olympics Discovery. The current building the WCH resides is not significant for the growing needs. It is small and does not provide enough room for the individuals that are served. I think it is imperative that we do whatever we can to the, for the community to assist with the WCHS as they grow so they can keep supporting families like mine. I cannot work without this program. It is what keeps Sarah safe so I can remain employed. I know each person that works these programs cares for the clients they are serving. And as a mom, it gives me such a peace of mind. Sincerely, Kimberly S. Hewlett. 
and I have 22 additional letters like that to support this project. Sorry about that. Anyone else like to speak about this? Come forward, speak your name to the microphone. I'm going to give you time to speak. My name is William James. I live in this house right here. For the last four years, I've been trying, that's two years before they bought it from Mr. B. Sorry, Mr. B. Trying to get the water drainage, which is now affecting my foundation. Because they put a pipe in up here, it comes through the property already and down here. The elevation, according to an outside surveyor still has the driveway pumping the water there, which means it's going to go directly into my house. If this is approved as is, then I need to know where to put the litigation. Do I do it through the city for approving it without doing appro appropriate actions to make sure that the water drainage is no longer affecting my house? It's actually affecting three houses on the street. The three houses right here. The guy next to me, his, his uh, sump pump never shuts off. It's constantly running. He's gone through four. And that's in the last six months. This one, they're about to start having the same problem because the water is not being fixed up here. This, their explanation to us during the little planning and zoning meeting, oh, well, we're a, uh, was it a, we're a company, it's zoned commercial. You're still going to be dumping water in to something that two different subdivisions pay to HOA fees to fix. That's really suspect right there. So you're wanting to overload ours and add additional water drainage to ours, doing damage to houses. For what reason? I have no problem with the company going in. I know we can't stop that. But they refuse to give valid explanations. When they start to give an explanation, all of a sudden, oh, well, let's tell about the good things we do. I understand you do good things. You're going to lower my property value. You're destroying my house, and you don't want to fix that. So where does the litigation need to be directed? Um, sir, we brought those concerns to the engineer. That's why they added the additional inlet at the corner. Remember, we had the, uh, there was, you had the concern with the water actually. So what happens down. with the water that's coming down the hill right here? No, no, keep going. There's, there'll be curb, there'll be curb, so it's going to take it all the way down. Keep following, see the additional inlet at the very end. Where's that water going to go? Yeah, it's going to take back to the basin. To the basin. It's going to to, take that to the one right here? To the base, to the actual basin, and then the inlet. The and then it drains into the one we're paying for. And it's calculated. Down. So it's going to set up a residential that we're paying guys, for. Guys, let's not talk yeah. over each other one at a time, please. So we're not going to be able to hear what you guys are saying if you guys are constantly talking over each other. Okay. Yes, it was then calculated. So, so that's the one that wasn't approved. At, uh, that's not the plan that was approved at the Planning and Zoning Committee? They mm -hmm. added the additional... So you added in. stuff that wasn't approved by the Planning and Zoning Committee. Is that what you're, you're telling me? Well, yeah. yeah. Planning and Zoning doesn't approve plans. They make recommendations. The whole process is set up with the two public hearings here at Warrington where there's a plan that's done. They receive feedback in the public hearing. And then how it's supposed to work now, I think it worked in this particular situation, is these concerns were brought by Neil to the owner of the property and said there are concerns about these particular issues with regards to drainage. And I believe the engineers here that will address what they did to alleviate your drainage concerns. So that's the purpose. So this is a public hearing on this new revised plan here in front of the Board of Aldermen. Last meeting at the zoning, we had a different map, and when you expressed your concerns, I went to the public works director and I asked them to check to see if that was your concerns were legitimate, and he said yes. So then they went back to the engineer on the project and said, you have to redo this because we don't want water running off this that was going to impact those properties along that line. So this should be How a change. How is that going to affect these two houses? Because uh, that's also a concern. He can't make it this guy can't make it because he's got four kids. He's got a single parent. So he told me to ask, how is, how is putting in that going to affect I, I think some pump is he, is constantly he running? running here? Yes, the engineer, and he is. Can yes. you answer that, sir? Oh, and Eric, he needs. Yeah, please. 
say who you're with. <laughs> I'm Eric Kircher. I'm with Cochran Engineering, uh, representing Warren County Handicap Services. Um, we go back to try to get everybody to see around. So when we came before planning and zoning, um, we had heard the concerns about stormwater. And this this site, there's a ditch, Law 47 here, that flows towards this pipe right here. That pipe comes under 47. All that water runs directly towards these homes. I don't disagree with that a bit. There's an existing area inlet right here that that water's supposed to go in, but I don't believe it's, it's fully going there as intended. So what we've got going is, and the, the water off the dry fork also just runs right off. There's no real ditch here. It runs down and runs this way. So our grading plan, this roadway he's referring to right here, we added this curb inlet right here because there was some concern about this water coming off this entrance and coming around the corner. There's a high point right across here, so this little bit of water right here goes into this inlet, this water, and this water right about here all gets collected in this inlet. Both these inlets flow through these pipes and come to the detention basin. The water up front comes off this hill, ends up on our parking lot, comes down, goes through this curb cut, goes in the basin. The area right back here drains off, goes into either this curb cut or this curb cut, and ends up in the basin. So all this water from over here all the way over here, it currently runs into the back of these lots. We're intercepting to this point right here. All the way across. Are y'all gonna completely remove this catch basin since we're paying for that water we're over for the dollars? That is our connection point. We're tying into that structure. <coughs> So you plan to use one that we're paying, are you going to start paying homeowners association fees since we pay the sir, homeowners association sir. fees to upkeep it? They do pay that yes. homeowners association. Well, see, I asked that question last meeting and they said, no, we don't have to because we're I, I pulled up the deed. It is listed on there. I have a copy of that listed. So they okay. do pay. They have been paying for the last two years. Well, that's why I asked because... Uh, yes, and I did not have the information okay. at the time. So they do pay for that. My so. biggest concern is the damage I've already <laughs> received. I mean, nobody's even wanting to do that, so litigation is going to have to be filed before damage I've already received. Excuse me, sir. When over here? Oh, <laughs> so many people will ask. You can't see who's talking. When, when did you first come before the city to say that you had a problem? When did when did when you was, come to the city? Who did you speak with? You're asking dates. I can't tell you exactly. I don't. I don't want a specific date. It was date approximately I... right out. It was. I know it was right after they put that pipe in, because that was when we had the melt off, and it was a real bad rain. Uh -huh. And I had. I'm waiting for my phone back from Apple. That'll be another five years. But I've got video on it of the water flowing. It looked like a little mini river. But did you come before city board? I, I was not part of the city I, board at that time. I called did you up here, and they it? said that. that I called up to, who was it, I called up, I have it written down, and I I was running late. Um, I don't remember exactly what I, I was I was just I wondering to. what, you know, what we would have told you then when you came before the board. They said they'll look into it, board. and I've never heard anything back. And just nobody like, got I didn't know okay. about the new added, even though I asked you, let me know if there was any updates on it, and you didn't let me know. So well, it was it's just almost like we're being brushed though. off. That's, that's the feeling that the homeowners are getting, is that we're being brushed off. Yeah, we'll let you know, we'll do this. But then you approve the driveway six months before plans are, drawn, are done through the county. There's emails to prove that one. You've got all this stuff that's actually going on, and it's directly affecting us. It's going to lower our homeowner, our, our home values. Our resale value is going to go to shit. Pardon my language. Yeah, watch your language, please. But it is. It, we're going to lose, on average, I, I, fifteen I, to twenty-five thousand dollars. It'll it'll raise the property value of that, but it'll still. I've already had it appraised, and I had it appraised with the plans so, that were given before. So before you go into it, Alderman Dyer, I wanted to reference back to some of your questions. Um, Williams comes spoke with me as well, since I am one of the neighbors. Um, and, and I get some of his aggravation because of the fact that I know when he was asking about the ditching next to his house to kind of alleviate mm -hmm. some of the issues he was having with mm -hmm. his foundation, um, he was told both by city and county, 
they didn't know exactly who or where easements were and considered. Um, there is a bit of conflict, and I think that's frustrating when you can't get a, a correct yeah. answer. And I didn't, I wasn't able to get them a correct answer either because I well, got the same well, same I mean, answers from them yeah, as well, sure. which is where and, do the easements lie, and we and, don't take care of any dry forks. So. Just last week on the, the city easement and where the county, city and county line lies. Mm -hmm. After I talked to you, what was that Monday or sometime last week? I don't remember I what day it was. Last week. You said that it was just inside my property. I said that, I, that road is county road. Now, I can't yeah, say where exactly uh, uh, well, is. You showed me that thing, and it has that line that's on my property. Well, I went up to the county because they have the actual plats there. It shows in the middle of the road. So we're still getting conflicting information to figure out which jurisdiction it is. You see what I'm saying? Sure. Nothing's lining up, and I understand it's between y'all trying to figure it out but nobody's trying to figure that out and that's been since i own the house then nobody's been able to give me a straight answer but if you look at the county map there those lines are not going to be right on yeah they're within i think they said five to ten feet but the middle of the road is 15 feet from my property so it's either right there it, it it's not matching up yeah it's right. just like they still say i own half the road the public works and it's not it's not a city road and as I told you before, though, it doesn't meet the city specs for what we could adopt into the yeah, city. Yeah, and I got so that. So, therefore... And that was the first time I heard that. Yeah, and I mean, we don't we do not do any maintenance on it. That's the one thing I referenced. But I get what County's saying, but would there be a contract or some kind of union and joint union contract to be able to say, hey, we'll maintain this part. We have that with Truesdale. We have it with other, you know, local areas that butt up the city limits. That one we don't. That is fully County. That's what... The problem is I, I understood what you were saying when I went up to the county administration building and saw what you were talking about. It, and it, the other thing I have is additional traffic. The last meeting, not many accidents happened on the road. Two days later, another accident happened right there. So we need to figure out no traffic survey was done on Dry Fork. Didn't, only because they didn't want to. Nobody wanted to pay for the traffic survey from MoDOT for the 47. That's why the driveway's where it's at. So let's go ahead and do one where we can pull strings and not do the traffic survey. Yet we have an accident two days after the meeting. Sir, where, where are you getting some of your information? How do you, uh, I, I live there. I, I watched the traffic accident happen. No, I, I understand that. I guess I'm questioning how do you know these things about traffic surveys? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm just asking. I, I used to work for the government. No, specifically, how how are you aware that there were no surveys done or, or that they there said was no meeting. Pardon me? They said until last meeting they don't have to because they got approved from the county already. Okay. There, there was no statement about a traffic survey. There wasn't a last meeting. Hold on. There was no statement whatsoever about a traffic study, which is what I think you're referring to. Yes, it was in the last meeting. The I made it. On, on these particular I asked a question last meeting. It was done. Hey guys, I'm going to say this one last time. We're talking over each other. Otherwise, we can't hear you. Please be respectful of each other. There was one last meeting because I asked a question and I was told there wasn't one done. So there was one asked last, question, last meeting. Uh, I did speak with the representative. I, I can barely hear you. These masks muffle a lot. Yes. I spoke with the representative from MoDOT just, just to see if they would be able to allow an entrance there, and they denied. They said that that would be denied based upon the information she had in front of her, that, that between Dry Fork and Dry Fork Crossing, they would not be able to allow an entrance there because they were too close. So did, the was there a study done on Dry Fork to, because of all the accidents that we have? I do not have a study on Dry Fork. Has anybody thought to get one? I mean, how many? If you come up over that hill, you have roughly, and I used, I did it both in a car and in my wife, in my truck. In the truck, you have a little more visibility. You come up over that hill where that driveway is wanting to be done, you have approximately 150 feet. And the way they drive, anybody that, you can just go sit there. They're driving, they're not driving 40 miles an hour. They're going 50, 60 miles an hour. I've got skid marks that go from the stop sign into my yard and a little bit farther past their house we've got them coming up they race right there that's why you need to have a traffic study done 
because you're going to cause accidents. If they're coming up and they're racing, I mean, the kid that hit the telephone pole and knocked three telephone poles down, he was racing. And coming up the hill, we need to have a traffic study done. And I, I spoke with the county, and they approved this entrance based upon the information they have. Based upon this site plan, they are allowing this entrance to go on to the county road. Okay. I'm glad you gave me that. That's for the record, right? That's for the record. Okay. Thank you. Mayor, can I go back to the gentleman who spoke first on this? And with all those changes going to that catch basin, is that still a concern for you? Or are you just talking about the maintenance of that catch basin in the area around there? Because it looks like, from what the engineer said, there's a lot of water being directed or redirected into that catch basin. And I'm just kind of curious what what that means from the perspective of where you're at. You have to go to the mic, please. I'm no expert on water flow. I've built a few ponds on farms, but I know. Did you make this any deeper with this drawing? Because it was only four feet deep. I can, I can wade that. <laughs> but that does, didn't seem like enough uh, depth holding uh, to collect enough water before you shoot it across the road to a maybe a little bit larger catch basin. And we've seen the old catch basin full. In fact, the, there's marks on top of the barn that looked like it overflowed a time or two. So, uh, super heavy rain, yes. These six, six inch plus rains, that's what my concern is. I'm not worried about the half inch rains. It's when you get over six inches, water goes downhill and we live below that. There's even water comes around the corner there and down Drive Fork Crossing and across the back I, I need to pull up my phone, I'm sorry. That does, that's not as severe as what comes out of that catch basin. Though. Does that answer your question? Yep, thank you. Questions or comments? For the second hearing, we ask for the review of the site plan application for the Lewis Family Garage to be located at 907 East Veterans Memorial Parkway. I ask that the ordinance of the City of Warrants to be made part of the record by reference, the comprehensive plan of the City of Warrants to be made part of the record by reference, and finally the packet shown is SP-136 on the agenda be made part of the record by reference, which includes the publication notice of tonight's public hearing that was posted in the Warren County Record. Are they, sorry about that. Are there any questions or comments on that issue? Mark Corman will be here to answer any questions. <laughs> yeah, for the record, Bar Corman, Lewis, and Beatty here to answer any questions on the Lewis Family Garage site plan. Not seen any. We'll duly note everything you asked for and if you move on to the next one. For the third hearing, we ask for the review of the conditional use permit for the Loose Family Garage to be located at 907 East Veterans Memorial Parkway. I ask that the ordinance of the City of Warrants be made part of the record by reference, the comprehensive plan of the City of Warrants be made part of the record by reference, and finally the packet shown as CUP-69 on the agenda be made, be made part of the record by reference, which includes the publication notice of tonight's public hearing that was posted in the Warren County Record. Noted. Anybody like to speak on the fam uh, Lewis Family CUP-69? And I believe, Mr. Corman, we will recognize that you're here to answer any questions. Hello again, and uh, uh, Eric Lewis is here in the audience as well to answer any questions too. Any comments? All right. If you can move on to the next item, and be uh, the construction SP-137. Okay, for this. Uh, Cat 5. Uh, for the additional hearing, we ask for the review of the site plan application for Cat 5 construction to be located at 1203 East Veterans Memorial Parkway. I ask that the ordinance 
a city warrant to be made part of the record by reference. The comprehensive plan of city warrant to be made part of the record by reference. And finally, the pack, packet shown as SP-137 on the agenda be made part of the record by reference, which includes publication of tonight's public hearing as posted in Warren County record. Be duly noted. Would anybody like to come speak on that? Mr. Corman, I see you coming. For the record, Bart Corman, Lewis and Beatty, Surveyors and Engineers. Here to answer your questions on CAT 5, we also have Doug with Shockley that probably will talk. Um, the owner, uh, Mike, is that right? Mike. As well as on Zoom, uh, David Smith uh, with CAT 5 Construction and John, uh, his real estate agent, are also on Zoom. So, so plenty of people to answer any questions anybody may have. Anybody like to speak on that or have any questions? Please come forward. Just state your name into the microphone at the podium. My name is uh, Doug Tinkham with Shockley Commercial Real Estate. Um, I represent the building owner, Mike. Um, I believe we sent out an email with a conceptual drawing. Hopefully everybody got that. If not, we did bring extras with us for some fencing. Um, we're before you today. I know it went through PNZ. PNZ um, wanted us to look at putting up vinyl fencing but this is going to be for storage. So we're proposing that you allow us to do chain link, um, like we've done in other buildings that we've built, in other areas we've developed. We will do with green slatting, so that we'll not be able to see what's in there. And then we would also overlay it with greenery, both trees and shrubs. So there is an artist's rendering of what we're proposing. off the artist rendering, you see how it kind of blends into the landscape, looks nice, clean, um, great tenant, great building owner. Um, I think these guys offer a lot to the city of Warrington and obviously my owner, you know, we've been through a lot of issues trying to find the right tenant to bring into that area. So if you have any questions, I'll do my very best to answer them for you. I certainly understand why you would prefer to have chain link over vinyl fencing. You have important materials that you would prefer to have a little more theft resistance so yes, I, I can understand why and um, with the tree line it looks like that's much better so. yes ma'am I think it will blend into the greenscape and we have done this in the past in other mm -hmm. areas as well may it look very nice I guess one of the issues brought up by the PNZ member on this issue was concern about the type of equipment that we put in there. If there was equipment that was substantially tall, it would go above the fence line also, whether it's the trees or whether it's the, the uh, vinyl siding. Could you talk to us about what you plan on storing in there and will stuff be stored that exceeds the height of the, what the protective barrier is? So I, I don't represent the tenant, but I can relate to you what's been relayed to me. Um, they have coils of cable. Um, that's kind of what their, their, their job mantra is. So those coils would be stacked in there as far as like boom trucks, large tracks of equipment, something like that. No, that's my understanding is this is strictly going to be for them to be able to store material for the jobs that they have throughout the area. I know they do have an off-site larger area where they keep a lot of their big equipment and things. My understanding, this will be more of a hub where they'll bring product to there to get it ready for their trucks to be able to go out and, and do the work, service work that they need to do. How high would this fence be? It's proposed at six feet. We may have to go to eight. It just we want to make sure that we stay below. Uh, that part of your condition was to stay below it. So if um, through the engineering that's being done, and uh, we've already talked to the fence company, if we need to make it seven feet, we'll make it seven. If we need to go eight to make you happy, we'll go eight. So six is what was proposed. And I think that's what was approved through PNZ. So we're here to work with you. We're not trying to just get something in iron and then hammer it. That's not what we do. So is this draw rendering that you gave us, is that uh, with slats in it? Or I can't, it's hard to tell from the rendering. Is that just a chain link fence or is there something else 
in the chain link. They will, there will be green slatting material okay. that's put into that, as well as the green space that would be on the Interstate 70 side, as well as the east side. So again, try to blend it into the background as much as absolutely possible. And I'm sure you're all familiar with the building. It's a beautiful building. So we don't want to do anything to minimize that. And Frisella out of St. Louis is going to do this, I understand. They did the when rendering. I at yes, ma'am. They, the they laid it out for okay. us, did the rendering for us. Um, so. Okay. I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Uh, where's the nearest uh, uh, operation that you run? And is, is there any in this area that... Again, you're speaking to the wrong side. I represent the building owner. I'm not exactly sure where their off lot is. I, I would think it's a little bit west, maybe, from where I'm, we are. Is that correct? I'm, I'm sorry. Gentlemen, I, I was muted there. Um, this is Buck with Cat 5 Construction. Uh, I heard the question is, do we have a location near uh, Wright City or St. Louis area? Was that the question? Correct. Uh, we have an office in the Kansas City area, um, and we've expanded into Wright City, uh, but we cover primarily all that area between the Kansas City, Warrensburg area, um, all the way uh, to O'Fallon. Where's your uh, Wright City location? Where's the what, sir? I'm sorry? You said, you mentioned uh, Wright City, you had a... Uh operation in Wright City? Well, we're hoping to have the office we're talking about now as our location. Uh, in the interim, we've leased a couple offices uh, right off the North Service Road, just offices, since we have an outside storage facility at uh, um, Northwind Storage there. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Anybody else like to make a comment? Okay. All right, Neil, if you'd be next on it. All right, for the fifth and final hearing, we ask for the review of the conditional use permit for Cat 5 construction to be located at 1203 East Veterans Memorial Parkway. <coughs> I ask that the ordinance of the City of Warrants be made part of the record by reference, the comprehensive plan of the City of Warrants be made part of the record by reference. Finally, the packet shown as CUP-70 on the agenda be made part of the record by reference, which includes the publication notice of tonight's public hearing that was post posted in the Warren County record. Any questions or comment on that? Mr. Mayor, it's just a ditto from the previous public you got hearing. It. Thank you, Mr. McCormick. That's any. We'll go ahead and bring the public hearing section of the Warrenton Board of Alderman meeting to a close. We'll go ahead and open up the regular Warrenton Board of Alderman meeting, and I would ask that you please rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance with us. Son of the consent agenda. Uh, before we begin with that, Mayor, I yes. would like to address the public that is participating by Zoom. If you would please put your phones on mute or your iPads on mute until you are ready to speak, I would greatly appreciate it. Sorry. No, you're fine. Thank you, Melody. So, consent agenda. First item we have is the regular meeting minutes from July 7th, 2020, and we have the work session minutes from July 7th, 2020 regarding the Greater Warren County Economic Development Council. Questions on that? I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items as submitted. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Deloy, second by Alderman Dyer. Roll call vote. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Dyer? Yes. Alderman Ock? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Motion passes 6 0. Next item will be hearing from the public. We ask that you come up to the podium, speak your name into the microphone, and we'll give you five minutes to speak. Is that right? That'd be fine. Okay. I'm turning out my timer, so I make sure I have my five minutes. 
Nothing personal. That's all right. We sent one too. It's all right. Okay. So uh, first I want to say that I got your letter about my festival paperwork not being complete, uh, yet it was denied over the $500 deposit. I get it. Um, I will not pay that ahead of time unless it was going to be approved. That's dumb. Anyway, so for the record, I want to officially withdraw my application and I will not be doing any events here in Warrington in the foreseeable future. I have three questions that I want to ask and um, I would like you to hold your comments till after I get this done because I don't want to take up my time. So my first question is, when was the last time a business owner was not allowed to be put on the agenda? If you can't answer this right now, we could put it off to the next meeting, but I would like this answer to be known. Question number two, since the WDA is now recommending whether a business can have an event or not, who will be recommending them when they want to throw a new event? Number three, what's to say, what say do the other businesses in town have when events are recommended that would affect the businesses and that are not members of the WDA? I have to say this on my second question, that since that would be most likely recommended in any event uh, for any of their members uh, that they would like to have. That seems to be a little bit biased. We all know um, whichever businesses is associated with the WDA will be automatically approved if they decide to have an event. This is uh, something you all this is something you all are allowing when it comes to the way things are ran in town. What's next? The WDA gets recommendations on what business should go into town and who shouldn't. What's the point of voting our government officials in if we are not going to allow groups to dictate what should or shouldn't happen in town? So with all this uh, said, um, being said, this is very hard for me to say, but I'm going to say it, okay? And it's emotional for me because I really do care about this town and this city and my customers and the community. But I've come to the point where um, you guys in the city it seems to don't want me here anymore. I will be looking to leave downtown and take my business and taxes and customers elsewhere when my lease is up in the fall. Um, and you all may say that I misunderstood you guys, but this is not just me. It's almost everyone that watched the last BOA meeting online. Um, so in case you're going to say something else on this, I'm going to say this. You say, if you want me to stay, what's the point? What support do I get from the city? I have made my decision, not just any decision with my events, but with other decisions with everything else. I have not had any support from for my businesses and anything I've wanted to do so far other than get one little table approved. So I will be at this point moving my cafe to a city where they want me there and, you know, they know that I'll be a big part of their community. But I do want my answers, my questions answered. I don't believe anybody's discouraging you from staying. You, uh, I, I get it's an opinion that you're stating that you don't believe. I think one of the questions was, uh, what's the point of you staying? I mean, we had a disagreement on, or I guess a misunderstanding, however you want to label it, when we were already enacting an ordinance that was coming up. Mm -hmm. I know you didn't care for it. You didn't like it because you didn't want to be a part of the downtown association. But I think there's a lot of presumptions in what you said that everything's going to get approved. It's not. I mean, you can I mean, you can base the numbers and everything you want to. It still has to go through an approval process, and people are still allowed to speak on what they want to speak on it. I get that, but I'm sorry. It still seems very fishy that you picked to pass this bill along Two days, in, within two days of the next meeting after I put in my application. So it does look fishy to me. Why did you pick me? Why did you pick my application to do this on? Why didn't you wait till the next festival or the festival after that? You know, I get it. You know, you could say all the corona or whatever. I get it. The festival probably wasn't even going to happen at the rate we're going. But that wasn't the case. The case was, you know, you just wanted the WDA here. W Warranted Dental Association to recommend. Who's going to recommend them when they want to throw a new event? I'll go ahead and let her attorney answer. So I want to make it clear that your application was turned in under the old process and the old ordinance. 
Yes, and I was told hold that. On, hold it, on, hold on. Let ahead. me finish, Maria. Okay. Um, your application was turned in under the old ordinance. It was an incomplete application. The, the layout was never presented, and the $500 deposit, which for parades is required, we've had that in our ordinance for a very long time. We treated that application under the old ordinance. We didn't treat it under the new ordinance. We never got a completed application. Like any incomplete application, we send it back and we say we have to reject this because it's not complete as the code requires. That's an administrative function of the city clerk or whoever's assigned to it. And we sent you the new application. So there was not like a you showed up to the meeting and, and just to be safe because you believed as though we were treating you differently. We treated you as though the, the application had come in under the old ordinance. You had the old application. Unfortunately, you never completed it. And so we had, and we talked about that at the meeting, the $500 deposit and the drawing that was required under the old ordinance. So we treated it that way. You never completed it. We had to reject it because of the time issues. And we sent you the new application and said, hey, if you want to still do this festival, you're welcome to do this festival. But because you never completed your application, we couldn't process it. Okay, well, in the letter I got, it doesn't say you're welcome to do this festival. Okay. Did, for, you get, did you get a copy of the new application? Yes, I did. Okay. But the issue is not that. The issue is that, again, at that meeting, if you go back and watch it, you said that I wasn't exempt from it because of the fact that my application wasn't complete. I get that. Okay, but somebody said, well, what difference does it make? Well, what difference does it make? You're passing a new bill. You can't say, okay, Maria, give me $500 now and show me, I'll draw a little map as to well, how everything's going to go. No, you wouldn't give me that time. All you said was no, okay, and then when we left, you passed the bill anyway. I, I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. You said, you guys said, somebody said, are they exempt from it, from, you know, the new bill when my application was put in? You said no because it wasn't complete. You or Terry or whoever, because I didn't put the $500 down, which I don't feel is right, okay? But regardless, you're going to tell me you're just going to deny it and not say, well, okay, why don't we give her 24 hours or whatever to come up with that and do it, and then she'll be exempt, but I'm not exempt from it. I, Even though it I, was, I it was my application was put before that bill ever came out. I, I don't understand the what you're saying about exempt. It doesn't really make sense to me, but the reality of it is is that, you know, we didn't reject that application right away. We had it for weeks. You, uh, no. Hold on, hold on. You knew that the $500 was due. That was under, if you have a parade in downtown Warrington under the old ordinance, you were required to pay the $500. That was never paid. We talked about it at the last meeting. We we have to reject that. If the applicant, whether it's a zoning petition or, or building license, business license, you don't have your no tax due certificate from the city, staff has to reject that. So I, I, I guess I'm not really following what you're saying. Um, first of all, I'm going to say I didn't. you did not have it for weeks. I could give you that. I brought it in. Two, two three. Two no, weeks, three. that's a lie. No, I'm sorry. I don't mean to accuse you of lying, but I know when I submitted it. I know when I got it. I got that. It, I, nobody could find it here. When I came to the city and I asked the girls up front, they were like, oh, we don't know what you're talking about. Which application is this? Like, really? Josh, I think I told you that they couldn't find the, the, the application. So later that day, I think at 5 o'clock or 4.30, whatever it was, then they're like, oh, this is the application you have to do. I filled it up. I turned it out that Thursday, and then we had the meeting. And I'm telling you, it was not submitted two or three weeks. There, there's no okay. way. Okay. Well, Maria, the application that you filled out required a $500 payment, correct? Yes, sir. And you never paid the $500 payment? Nope. And you never did the drawing of what you wanted to shut down? Nope. Okay. So it was never a complete application, right? Okay. No. Okay. But again, whether it was me or anybody else that's new to doing this, because I don't like doing any of this stuff here, okay, and I'm only doing it because of the principle of the whole thing, you could have said, well, you want to give $500 now? You want to do a quick drawing? We'll approve you. But that wasn't going to happen. I'm not here to argue, okay? I don't want to argue with you. I want my, I want my questions answered. That's what I want. And, you know, I'm sorry. I've, this is how I feel. I feel like you guys let me open it up and it was great and everything was good. I don't know what changed or how it changed, but then I asked to do special things because I'm like, hey, my customers will like this. I want to bring more people to Warrington. All of a sudden, oh, no, I can't do that. And I will not be a part of the WDA. I'm not. So why can't I just do it on my own? But, again, we but, went through this Maria, already. The, the reason you can't do it is because you never completed the application oh my God. Okay. to be approved. Okay, that's not even – Okay, I'm not even going there. Can somebody answer my question? Again, I'm not 
talking about this anymore. When was the last time a business owner was not allowed to be put on the agenda? If you can't answer this, let me know. I'm sure you can. You, you have a say for this, too? I'm sorry? <laughs> when was the last time that a business owner was not allowed to be put on the agenda? Why was I not allowed to be put on the agenda, but I could talk here for five minutes? People go on the agenda when they have a business item to discuss with the city. I do. Well, I understand, but the permit was discussed at the last meeting, and you have the five-minute opportunity to do public comment. So you, you, basically the city administrator can determine what are needed to be on the agenda because of the time limitations and what are not needed to be on the agenda. So it, 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 you're not the only one that this has happened to. What specifics of it, I'm not sure. Oh, I, I'm sure there isn't anybody, but I would like to know when the last time it happened. Can you email me that? So, I don't know. It's not coming on. You're not here to pick a fight. But every time we answer something, you're counterdicting us and telling us that we're not doing that or we're doing something. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and call this because I know we're we've been good in the past. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna tell you, it does seem like you're picking a fight with us. Mm -hmm. And if I'm that's not. what it is, just call it what it is. That you I'm don't not. like what we're doing, and I understand that we do have processes in place. Nothing was meant to change against you. Okay, I don't like what you're doing to me. I don't like how restrictive you are all of a sudden of me trying to do something that would help the city of Warrington. And I fully understand that, but when we have processes in place, we have to hold to those processes. There's nothing that we said, Maria, this is for you. We're going to come against you. No, but it was kind of fishy how it happened. Why my application? Why did you have to pass this bill when I submitted my application? It could have been denied, and you could have done it the week after. And I get what you're saying about it being fishy, but we explained at last meeting that this is a process we've been carrying down for a while with working with the downtown association. But you picked my application to do it, and, and that's fine. I don't want to go there. Um, other than that, can you answer me who's going to recommend the downtown association? Who's going to recommend them when they want to do a new event? Anybody? The mayor, if I can. The process is set up so that the downtown association, as, as we said, and as you know, the speaker that was here from the winery down the street recognized, because he Bob. brought that, Bob brought that partnership to the city, mm -hmm. and that commitment was made at that time is, they are not making a decision on festivals. They were making recommendations with regards to one of the concerns that was raised. The reason for having this downtown uh, collaboration was festivals and events that take all the businesses and all of downtown into consideration when we have them. And so there have been events that have been unsuccessful or events that you know, other business owners have been upset because they're not geared towards their retail business or whatnot, and they have to shut down for those days. So that process was put in place. So when WDA brings an event down, they will review it and have to address the same criteria, make recommendations on that event. It is to get the Downtown Business Owners Association and that partnership's input on it so that they, the board can make an informed decision. They are not making a decision. They are merely reviewing it from the WDA perspective, which was part of the commitment that was made when Bob brought that Missouri Main Street program to the city, and we approved it, and we agreed to partner with them on it. Okay, I get that, but it's still not answering my questions on who is going to recommend them when they want to do a new event. Well, the board will be the only one approving any event with the warrant. So, but is the, is the board going to recommend them? I don't understand what you're saying. Never mind. It's useless. All we're doing is going around in circles. Uh, but I just want to say what I said. I thank you for your time. You know, I'm sorry that it's come down to this. I'm not Mr. Mayor. I'm not picking a fight. Okay. I just want to stand up for my rights. And I just feel that, you know, it, it's, it just looks really fishy. And that's all I got to say about it when it happened. The timing on it. And I'm sorry. Anybody else like to speak on any issues? Please come forward to the podium, state your name. We'll give you five minutes to speak. I need a second. That's fine. My name's Tom Booz, uh, resident of Ward 2. I have a question on what was just spoken about for uh, parades. You have to apply and pay $500, I believe. The, the For parades, yes, you okay. have to apply. There's a $500 refundable deposit. The reason that's there is because we implemented this years and years ago because there were actually horses at a parade where city staff had to go clean up the horse okay. poop. And then also there, 
you know, they throw candy at the parades and city staff has to clean that up. So the deposit is there merely to incentivize the parade organizers to clean it up. If you clean it all up, city looks through it and there's no issues and there's no cleaning that has been, that $500 is fully refunded. Okay, my question would be, a few months ago we had a march from Holy Rosary downtown. Did they apply and pay for their fees? That was not a parade that was applied for okay. or anything like that. Security was provided because the that was going to occur one way or another. Okay. I know it seems to be splitting hairs to say a protest or a parade. However, that was not something that an organizer came here and said, this is what we want to do. The city had to react and make sure that <coughs> these streets were safe as that went through. All right. well, would you tell him why they didn't have to pay the $500? He just did. Because it's a, uh, because it's a freedom of speech, right? So that, that means I can have a parade or whatever Thank or, you. Or protest. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. So to answer just a little bit of that as well, Tom, is because there were some counter issues that were coming up of what may be done on the side of the protests as well, and that's why a lot of security was put out there just to keep the peace. Anybody else? Come on forward, sir. If you would, just step to the podium, state your name. All right, James Ortiz with uh, Papa's Cubic Cafe. I got questions for the lawyer back there. Uh, for number two, uh, her point was this, it, with the WDA, okay, how can we as the public not see it as biased when these members of these businesses are part of that association? And I understand they have to go through a rigorous progress. I, I get that. But what's stopping them from approving each other anyway? They don't approve any. They, oh, I'm sorry. Recommend. Yeah, that, that there is specific findings the way the ordinance is written regarding specific things. So the idea is any project that is downtown that, as I said before, we have this partnership and it affects all downtown, is they specifically have to say this project or this event addresses mitigating business, mitigating traffic, security, uh, health, all the things that are really necessary to to have a safe event. Okay. So so it, it, it's not, I, I, I guess I am having a hard time understanding this, like, I, I assume what you're saying is there's like a conflict of interest or Almost something. Almost in a way. We're, but, well, but we're, we're WDA, every downtown event over the last couple of years, they've been the ones that have, you know, because of an event, it is very difficult to throw a successful event that is just one business. I'm well and, aware. It, and it can have, it shuts down the street and it can have a negative impact on the other businesses if, if they're around there. So, you know, the concept was it's an opportunity to get the Downtown Business Association, our partners down there, to give their input on what, how those impacts are mitigated. And there could be an event, Maria's event, for example, where they're like, hey, there's a better way to do this. We'd recommend you might want to consider this. So there's not, it's a collaborative process. It's not a approval process. They're making recommendations for improvement based on the experience on prior events. Okay, fair enough. Now, the businesses that are not associated with them, if there's an event that they're planning, are they going to go to each business that is not part of them and explain, hey, we're shutting down the street. What do you think? Is this okay? Blah, blah. Because this affects the businesses that are down there. Some of them don't have anything to do with festivals and stuff like that. As, as I'm sure you can imagine based on this, it's very difficult in the history of events downtown to make every business happy. There's not that many businesses down in Warrington. Well, I understand though, that, but even the ones that are there, it's difficult to make them all happy. So the answer is no, that they will. They don't have to come out. Well, that's and, not what I said. Oh, I'm no. asking. I'm asking. Okay. So the well, you're not asking. You're answering the question for me, right? Yes or no question, but it's okay. Okay. So the the reality of it is, is that you're trying to do the best service to consider the downtown businesses in totality. If you look at the ordinance and you are denied by the board or there's an event WDA hosts and Papa's Cafe doesn't allow, doesn't like it because they don't feel that they're included, Papa's Cafe can appeal the decision to approve it to back to the Board of Aldermen. So we did absolutely take into account in the drafting of this ordinance the individual business owner and having a right to say, hey, this doesn't include me. This is not proper. This is this. This is this. So you could have an event that's W day and 99% of the business is approved and one business doesn't like it. They can appeal the decision, bring it back in front of the board, air their grievances, have their appeal heard, 
So yes, there is consideration and a voice built into this that is a protected voice, an appeal voice, for the approval of an event. Okay, so all the events, no matter what, if they shut down the city or the, the streets, they are... Just in downtown historic... Are they brought here as a meeting first before they're approved? They... There's like a public hearing meeting or... Wait, hold on. They I'm go asking. to the W Downtown Association. Mm -hmm. They review it, make recommendations and... And, you know, with regards to the criteria that I'm sure the extensive criteria that's in the ordinance, it then goes to the Board of Aldermen. They review the criteria. They listen to anybody that has any information about it, and they make a decision to approve the permit. Yeah. If that one individual business person doesn't like it, they can trigger an appeal where the board has to reconsider it, yeah. regardless of if they agree about what that one business likes or not, and it's not approved until that one person's grievances are heard on that particular appeal at that particular time. Okay. That answers my question. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. You. Anyone else would like to speak? All right. Next will be the Board of Alderman comments. I have a couple things. By all means. First off, Jeff Nelson, uh, a city employee, lost his son this week. I think all of us would like to express our sincere sympathies to Jeff and his family. Um, uh, it's very tragic. I can't imagine the loss of a child. So I personally would like to um, offer my sympathies to his parents, who I've known a very long time. Also, um, in response to some of the COVID issues that we have, as cases begin to spike in our community, I would just like to encourage residents to please adhere to requested mask orders. Please be kind. Uh, many of the people who are attempting to enforce these rules are simply employees. Uh, please don't take it out on them. Be kind. I'm hearing stories of people going into doctor's offices and cursing people in those environments because they don't want to wear a mask. Please don't put their jobs at risk. Try to comply with these orders. Be kind. Um, the citywide yard sale. I know it's a success because my garage is empty. So thank everyone who purchased things at my sale. Um, and um, one last, last thing. Um, we have an open forum here. I've been to, with my husband being mayor for several years, I attended all those meetings. I've been on the board for several years. I cannot tell you how many meetings we have sat through where the mayor has asked for someone from the public. If someone from the public is here to speak on something, rarely do we have anyone come before the board to address concerns. Instead of going throughout the community and saying the city doesn't do this or the city doesn't do that. This is the place to tell us how you feel. You have five minutes. Please come before the board and address your concerns to us. Um, we have wonderful city employees who deserve compliments. And it would be really nice if once in a while um, one of those employees heard from some of our residents, um, good job. We saw you out there, and, and we think you're doing a really good job. And um, that's pretty much all I have to say. Thank you, Alderman Anyone else? Thank you again. Uh, next, we'll hear from Director of Operations, Brandy Walters. Good evening, Mayor and Board. 
Um, I wanted to start out my first thing on the agenda is our monthly report for administration. And I just wanted to point out a couple of things. I know it's not on this report, but we did have the yard sale this month. Um, we actually handed out 250 copies of that map, which is quite a bit. We only planned on about 100, so we printed out 250, which is great. That means we had a lot of people that were out doing it. Um, and we actually heard from a couple businesses that also joined in part of the yard sale, and they had a very successful day as well. So that was a great news. Questions on it? The next thing that I have is, and um, just to let you know, there's going to be later on the agenda, there's an ordinance for the speed limit on Veterans Memorial, that piece that we took over. So we've added that to the uh, speed limit in the ordinance. So there's going to be a bill later on in the agenda for that piece because we are keeping those the same. I believe we brought that up at the last meeting. They're keeping those speed limits the same. Any questions on that? Next. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from the Director of Planning and Development, Neil Fick. Good evening. You have a copy of my monthly marketing and development report. Do you have any questions? Thank you. Any questions for Neil? You can carry on to the next topic. All right, so we'll move on to the adult handicap services. All right, so the application was submitted for the site plan approval uh, for the for the handicap services, and we have um, our engineer or the engineer here, um, Eric Kirshen, uh, with Cochrane Engineering, who will give his presentation and answer any questions about the new development. Good evening. Again, I'm Eric Kirchner with Cochran Engineering. Here this evening representing Warren County Handicap Services. Um, also attending this evening, we have uh, Kelly Codfelder uh, with Warren County Services and Joanne from Boone Slick Regional Planning Commission, which is the authority governing the grant money for this project. For you this evening, requesting site plan approval. Uh, the site that we're discussing is located in the southwest corner of Dry Fork Road and Highway 47. Site is 2.44 acres, and the site is uh, zone C3. The project before you is proposing a 4,900 square foot new building with a future expansion area. Uh, access for this project is going to be from Dry Fork Road. Uh, we discussed a little bit earlier about the location of the entrance. It's pro uh, centered approximately between Highway 47 and Dry Fork Crossing, uh, which 225 feet from Highway 47 is 200 feet from Dry Fork Crossing. So we tried to kind of split the distance and miss the utility poles that were in there to give it the spacing. And uh, as was mentioned previously, uh, we have received approval from Warren County uh, Road Department for the location of the entrance. Um, the parking that you see on the site, your, your code requires 17 spaces. There's 31 spaces on the site, which includes two ADA spaces five spaces for their um, shuttle vans that they use for their, their business, and also one space for uh, bus parking. The main entrance for the building faces Highway 47 on the east side. Uh, it has a covered entrance on the north side of the building, which operates as a area for the shuttle vans to pull up underneath the canopy out of the weather and be able to load and unload the, uh, the clients for, for the business. Uh, there is a trash enclosure located on the side on the north side of the building, and it'll be masonry. The site lighting is shown on the plan, um, meets the uh, city of Orange and requirements. The parking lot lights for this will be turned off after business hours, so there won't be bright lights on this parking lot after the business um, closes down for the evening. Uh, there was discussion in regards to the detention basin. Uh, we have a detention basin uh, located on the north side of the building to collect the meter to storm water. I'll talk about, a little, about that a little bit more. Um, as we're talking, this is the detention basin that we have shown right here. Uh, this detention basin is sized, once again, the, the storm water off a of dry fork runs directly on this property. 
Highway 47 stormwater comes into this ditch, comes down. MoDOT's got a pipe underneath 47 here that discharges in. So we are collecting this water via a system of storm sewers, curbs on the parking lots, and, and pavement to direct that stormwater into the basin. Um, after the PNZ meeting, we were asked to take another look at this this area up here to make sure we didn't have any water rolling around this corner down on this gentleman's property. So we added a curb inlet here, which will collect this portion of this entrance and the water coming off of Dry Fork Road. And water on this side coming off Dry Fork Road will come down and come through a drainage swale, come in, come in this inlet, along with the water that's located here. And again, there's six inch tall curbing along all the pavement here to make sure that water gets directed into that inlet. As I said before, the water up in this area drains down curved all the way around, as with the others, enters the curb cut here to go in the basin, and a series of the same thing happens here for this water to end up here. The detention basin has an outfall structure, which is designed according to the City of Warrington's requirements, has a low flow opening, um, uh, and another opening as well as an overflow, and then that is discharged into this existing area inlet that's located right here. Uh, one other thing I want to mention, based upon comments, is we went back also and did some additional grading up in here to make more assurance that this water from this pipe in this area up here is actually going to go to the basin. So you can see the more defined contours here directing that water into our basin and down in this area. Um, the design of the detention basin is designed according to a series of storm events. Uh, the lowest storm event is a two year storm event. The pre existing conditions for that site in a two-year storm event has 2.88 CFS of runoff. After the basin's put in, the runoff for the two-year storm event is 0 0.792 CFS. For the 10-year storm event, the pre-condition is 4.096 CFS being discharged. The post after the basin is installed is 1.124 CFS. 25-year storm event, the pre is 4.856 CFS. The post is 1.319 CFS. And in the, the biggest storm event for design, the 100 year storm, the pre is 6.203 CFS. And the post after we put in the basin is 1.658 CFS. So you can see we're drastically reducing the amount of water that's ending up in the existing system and ultimately into the basin that we're talking about down in the subdivision, which will help relieve some pressure on that existing basin and make things function a little better as well. Uh, landscaping plan was provided with our plans and is prepared according to the city's requirements. Your landscape code requires there we go. landscape code requires a 10 foot wide buffer along in your residential property and it has to be planted with um, evergreens or have a six foot tall fence placed in there. And the plan that you have before you shows a six foot tall fence right there. Um, if you can go back to the site plan for me, please. Thank you. Uh, we had talked to PNZ. We were in discussions with PNZ, and PNZ agreed and, and added a condition of approval for our request that we would be able to, instead of putting this fence down at the very bottom of this hill, that's about 10 to 12 foot tall that would serve no purpose to screen anything up here to give any buffer. And some of these residences already have fences on their property line down through here. We asked if we could move that fence up, fall along this, and then go along the top of this detention basin up into this area. That would provide better screening for the residents down below from this up here. And PNZ agreed that they thought that was a good idea. So um, I think that's been included in their, their approval. There's been some concern at PNZ about whether this project has any access to Dry Fork Crossing. We have no access to Dry Fork Crossing. None of the traffic for this will end up on Dry Fork Crossing from a business standpoint. Um, talked about the adjustments to the storm. And as part of this project, we have no desire to get down here and here and disturb any of these people's property. Our improvements are all taking place above. We won't be on. There's been some concern and discussions about whether we're going to be disturbing any their fences or 
any of the uh, their stuff they have, we will not. All the improvements will take place up here and here. And one other thing I just want to point out is, and we discussed a little bit last time too, this site is zone C3 per the City of Warrington's code, which allows a much, much more intense development like a shopping center with a parking lot or strip retail, uh, parking lot with much more runoff, or even have lights that are on till 10 o'clock at night. So this is a much, we're only using, <coughs> We're only using, for the actual development, we're only using about half that we're putting the building the parking lot on. Then we're using green space, obviously, for detention space, and the rest of the state's undeveloped. So it could certainly be developed all the way to its limits and have much, much more dense development on it, according to your C3 code. Um, I'll open that in questions. And if you have any questions for, from a business standpoint, Kelly can come up and talk about that, too. So I have a question on the... Um do you have an artist rendering of what the building and parking lot and all would be looking like? We've got the renderings of the buildings themselves, mm -hmm. but not the parking lot itself. But there are renderings of the buildings. Yes, we, we did submit packet. building elevations. My concern is, are you comfortable that you've over-engineered that water catch so that there's no problems? I am. And that basin is also designed to have... Because we had some concerns here tonight. I understand. Yeah, and, and I get it. They're yeah. all down below there. Sure. And all that water today goes right down into their back doors. I completely understand that. And that basin is designed to handle a 100-year storm event, your maximum storm, and provide two foot of freeboard in it. So I don't. I truly believe we're there. Well, that's my concern, that we're covering that water. Well, and I, I spoke with Larry Beatty about the existing condition. He's responsible for the existing condition, but I will set up an appointment with him to go out there and meet the concerns that this gentleman um, expressed with us. Sounds like he's got some problems over there. Yes, but I... I don't know for who's, uh, whose problems they are, but... Right, but I will meet with him because that trustee is responsible for that HOA, so I will meet with Mr. Larry Beatty okay. and actually go out and take pictures and address the existing condition to make sure that there aren't any additional concerns out there. And I walked that area with Mr. Farney that was here this evening and, and spoke, and I just appreciate the fact that after these concerns were raised, that you guys went back to the drawing board again to and have answered. Uh, I've spent quite some time on the phone with them, and I understood their concerns, but I really do think once you guys went back over this again and revised this plan, I think it's going to work out. So we appreciate the fact that a lot of additional work went into making sure this stormwater issue is taken care of. So, so I'm going to jump in on that. I live there. So let me just, uh, I, live, I live right next to the water retention pond. So in fact, I usually help maintain it. Um, speaking with a lot of the other neighbors who are still here, <laughs> um, I don't think anybody is arguing that this is a great facility and is well needed here. Um, the things that they do are great. Um, some of the water retention was some of the issue, but I think the majority of the neighbors feel like it's been addressed and they're comfortable with it. Um, it I'm going to call him Mr. John because that's what I do. He's my neighbor. But um, it, he does have a valid concern. If you've walked down there and we actually walked down into the ditch, it, it is it is washing out very quickly. And I understand it is in the county property where it's, it's – but it's a city property issue and water runoff that's causing that. We need to be conscious of that. We can't just say that that's just county issue. We have to be conscious of it and actually help out. Or we're, when somebody does annex in this city, it's going to become a problem. So that area is capable of annexing at any time. Um, the street back behind it is capable because it's curved and guttered of if they wanted to, as a homeowners association, annex into the city, they could. Um, and I'm not knocking anything that Neil's done. I think Neil's gone above and beyond for what, what, he's, what he's been asked to do. And, and he has met some resistance, and I appreciate your patience in dealing with that, Neil. Um, I see the valid concerns. I've never actually seen that bottom basin. I've seen it full, but it's a quick rain. It's one of those ones where we got three inches within one hour. Um, it, I don't know the engineering point of it, but I know that uh, I don't think it was meant to handle as much water that rifles down into it. Um, 
just because of the layout of the land and the different landscaping people have done around there, which is nothing we can control, um, there is quick water runoff that goes down into it. And I think that's a concern they've had. But, if, you know, like I said, going back to the drawing board and addressing the issue, I think was a key point. And I know at least one set of neighbors back in the back is comfortable with it because we discussed it before we headed up here tonight. Neil, so. you're going to get with Larry on that rock because yeah, that I, that has is so washed out there. Yeah, so when I spoke with him, he's like, I don't really see any conditions, but I wasn't out there with them actually walking the oh, site. And I, I walked took it. his word on what I saw from the top of the basin. I was not in the very back of it. So I mean, I took pictures of the basin. I was like, I don't see what the concerns are. So it's yeah. Yeah. it's <laughs> not with the basin. It's, it's the ditch that's out on the side. He had concrete dumped there, which was great. But the erosion's happening around the concrete, which is loosening the concrete and pushing it down further. So I understand where his concern's at is that it's just going to widen with more water flow through yeah. there. I, I, I walked to, that same property. Yeah. I went out there and yeah. met with John also. We need to there. help him out with that. And I, I see his can. concern on that back side of that. Yes. Yeah. Sure. But what we were addressing was this reduces the amount of water that's going right. into that basin. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was Correct. trying to express to the homeowners that had contacted me. I was like, oh, this is definitely going to help the, the problem that is out there now. But again, like I said, I will contact Mr. Larry Beatty and, and try to address the existing condition that's out there. But he is responsible, the HOA trustee, and he is listed on, on the deed as being the HOA trustee for that detention basin. And if the water is coming off that de detention basin, ultimately they would be responsible for that. And as far as Mr. Will, when Mr. Will came up, I mean, I, I get that he's heated. I mean, after I went and saw too, I mean, I, I get the conflict. He doesn't understand who's supposed to be maintaining the ditches. I get our point is the same, you know, it's a city where we stand, but you know, when county's given the information that it's a, it's a mutual shared road, which we've never maintained as far as I know, if you can tell me different, that's great, but I don't believe we've ever maintained Dry Fork Road itself, um, even when they overlaid it just recently. Um, so I don't believe the curbing, or, and there's no curbing, the ditching on the side is anything that we have a concern with. Um, I, I feel his pain on that, but at the same time, I mean, it's in place for a reason, and the easements are in place for a reason. Um, that's not to cast a problem onto county. It's just that's maybe something we may need to work together or what be it on as much as we can, but we're bound by certain limitations that we can do within the city as well. Yeah. So We can just help yep. Mr. Farney out with a few loads of big rock. <laughs> right. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, may I make a comment? Sure. Um, I think in fairness, disclosure... Um, I need to say that my wife is currently a board member on Warren County Handicap Services, and I was a board member for a number of years. Uh, I think I even voted to purchase that property, if I recall right, when I was on there. And every question I brought up relative to this is no different than the questions that I would bring up if it was a strip mall coming in. Our obligation as a board is to make sure that we don't create a situation worse for the people in the area where construction is going than it was before. And so I've tried to limit my comments only to that particular issue. So I think in fairness to the issue, when we come down to the voting on the bill, I'm going to abstain, even though I don't have a reason to abstain under state or city code, but I will abstain on the project um, because of my connection and my wife's connection to the organization. Always, We've always honored any type of moral, ethical issue any board members had to want to abstain, and we'll do it at this time as well. Thank you. Anyone else like to comment on this? Okay. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Which alderman was it to ask for the rending? I think it was Alderman Miller. I, I know it's been up there for a while, but we kind of skipped over that. Is, is that address the issue you were asking? I do have one more question. I'm sorry. You spoke about the, the parking lot lights. Those will be turned off at night. Um, are there any security lighting on the building itself and things like that that's going to affect the homeowners around there? There'll, there'll be security lighting on the exterior building and minimal lighting just to give security around the doorways, but it won't be nearly as bright as the parking lot lights, which okay. is why they'll go off at dark, so you don't have that glare coming down onto the joiners. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Crump, that's why my, my room's in the back of the house. The daughters are up front. I'll just see that all night. I mean, <laughs> you just, you got to priorities. Yeah, is that what it is? <laughs> They're young. They can handle it. I'm older. I can't. Any other questions? Yeah. Are they going to grade the hell out of any? 
can, can you come up and say, you got to speak your name. <laughs> I know. Everybody hates coming up here, but for the record, if people ask, they need to know who it is speaking. Mike, are they going to grade the hill out any or put, like, grass down? Or oh, name. Mike Licklider. Thank you. Are they going to grade the hill out any? I know, like, on the back of my property, it's pretty bumpy. Are they going to put grass seed or... So we're not going to do any major disturbance to that, that hill. It's already a three-to-one slope. We're going to develop on top of it. We will clean up that slope and get a good stabilized grass on there so it can be mowed and maintained, yes. Answer your question? Yep. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Move on to the next item. Mike? Or Neil, sorry. Oh, uh, I could move along with the staff comments for that um, well the motion from the planning and zoning was to pass that um, 8 to 0 at the last meeting um, from January 2nd the staff comments um, recommend the six foot privacy fence be located at the top of the hill um, Warren County has approved the preliminary site plan entrance on the dry fork road um, MoDOT traffic specialist stated that the new entrance would not be approved based upon the information she had available to her. There was not enough uh, safe space for an entrance on Highway 47 in between Dry Fork and Dry Fork Crossing. Uh, the new detention basin will collect runoff from the improvements uh, from the existing runoff and uh, currently flowing toward it will keep it from running toward the existing homes. Additional grading will be completed. Um, to form a swale, and I'll direct that toward a detention basin. Warren County Handicap Services uses a shuttle, uses shuttle buses during the day that will help with reduce traffic. A uh, second storm drain will be located at the end of the driveway to address the drainage. We discussed that. Warren County Handicap Services does pay HOA fees and has allowed use of the stormwater detention and the uh, accessories. Um, the Warren, Warren County Accessor's Office. I contacted the Warren County Accessor's Office because there was an issue about lowering the cost of the property. Well, after contacting them, they didn't have enough information. They couldn't verify that this was going to reduce the property, but it's based upon there's not enough time, there's not enough information. It would have to wait till after houses were being sold in that area to come up with any information as far as a new project would um, deter the, the property value. Um, any concerns with the existing condition of the detention, detention basin will be addressed by the current HOA trustee, and I will contact Mr. Larry Beatty and set up, try to set up a meeting so we can walk that site out there to address the area of erosion. And uh, Warren County Handicap Services, the site plan meets the minimum requirement for the vocational and technical school. That's all I have. Any questions on that? All right, yeah. thank you. other questions did you have another item oh i'm sorry i said no no that's that's all i had okay uh do you have another item you're going to discuss tonight okay so we're going to lewis family garage sp 136 Um, site plan approval was submitted on 5620 for an application for a site plan approval for Lewis Family Garage that will allow an automotive repair shop. All right, so the Lewis Family Garage, uh, Mr. Eric Lewis is here to answer any questions as well. Um, pretty simple, it's an existing building. Actually, I think Tom's here, the owner. So uh, it's an existing building uh, with, with overhead doors already there. It's a good place to do that. There's automotive repair just down the street. Um, we're pretty much trying to use the facility as is. Uh, we are adding some landscaping um, and stuff that's required by the site plan. And uh, here to answer any questions that we may have. Bart, I have a question. Sure. I thought that was all pavement. How are, you, how are they adding landscaping? It's not easy. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah. 
so I know asphalt and I know trees. Yeah. And they don't usually. <laughs> so so on the on the west side, there's a few feet between there and the Chick Lumber property. Uh, so we're going to put some shrubs along that that foundation there uh, for okay. your foundation shrub requirement. Um, and then on the east side, um, north of the overhead door, uh, we can put some shrubs along there. But to beautify the front, it's all concrete or asphalt, so we're putting some planter boxes up front to, to put a few of them to, to do what we can there. Uh, and so, and then we're, we're we're stacking in all our street trees and parking trees along Powell Street there, uh, because that's really the only location that we have. So okay. it's, it's the reason I asked was because I I think perhaps Tom lost out on uh, a sale of the property uh, some time ago because. Yeah he couldn't meet the planning and zoning requirements for shrubs and in driving by there's there's no place to plant anything so I hope this turns out better yeah I hope so too <laughs> okay so one of the concerns was parking out there so this is is a, a garage so they're required to have so much parking and there's an existing business there so um, the garage is required to have seven parking spaces and the soothing touch the massage uh, uh -huh. business is required to have three so that property line that property line was actually in the middle of one and a third of those parking spaces which took away from those so chick lumber has agreed to um, allow them to have those two parking spaces so they'll have a total of 11 parking spaces over there now so they've got the minimum seven for the garage and the three for the massage business so they will have that now but it we also asked that they um, kept the bays at two bays two working bays for the garage and also um, in the future, if they get larger, if they be, if they have more employees, that will also affect the number of parking spaces. So they'll want to keep the, the 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 employees at a minimum, and they won't be able to increase any parking bays because every bay is required to have two parking spaces. So right now they'll have two bays to work in. Okay, how right. many handicap spots do they have to have then? They have one handy. They have one yeah. handicap spot each. One, the massage one. place has one and it's in the middle yes it's, in, it, the middle. it's okay. in the middle yeah. it serves okay. it serves both it's all one building so so there's one there because we're less than 25 spaces and there's no way cars can park along powell i guess huh no, no. Um, not really okay. we got trees there okay now <laughs> I, I, trees proposed trees yes. okay I'm, I'm with you question for council you know we've never had a situation on a law requirement or a parking where the property owner has been allowed to borrow spaces from a neighboring business is this something that what happens if chick comes back and says oh we're so busy we don't want you to use our spaces anymore what does that do to this could you kind of talk through that with sure us? we do allow cross parking agreements when it is consistent with the property what's very unusual about this lot which i mean quite honestly it's almost bizarre is that if you can, do we have a picture of what it I'm looks like it. yeah there's a picture Melody, the, the two spaces really look like they belong to this property um so i think you know from a view standpoint and from an aesthetic standpoint it just made sense for them to have two spaces as cross parking and chick has more than enough spaces to meet their requirements they did also apply to have two spaces from mama bear daycare that staff would not approve because of the fact that it would take mama bear daycare out of compliance so they can't use those two spaces so if you can see those two spaces for chick lumber even though they're not right in front of chick lumber they're in front of that building that made sense for cross parking we are usually pretty vigilant to not approve cross parking because you have the overlap in parking numbers but in this situation Alderman Auk, it didn't affect Chick Lumber's parking, and it was a natural cross parking access because it honestly appears as though right. we're both located on the property. However, if Chick Lumber were to rescind that approval for cross access parking, in that situation it would take them out of compliance with their site plan and their conditional use permit, and they would have to, they essentially would be given an opportunity to try to mitigate that, but if they didn't, they would lose their approvals. 
So, is there a written agreement between yes, the there is. and the organization? Yes, it's, it, there is a written agreement that is part that is part of the approval process, and if that is rescinded by Chick Lumber, obviously they are no longer in compliance with their uh, with their site plan or conditional use permit. Thank you. Any other questions? I think uh, you mentioned that. Uh, there's two bays inside, is that correct? Right, there's two overhead doors, so each of them are considered a bay. Okay. Uh, so. so there'll only be available two cars we worked on at one time, is that correct? correct? And there'll be no parking of vehicles outside that... In the evening spring. Okay. It's all back. Gotcha. Thank you. So we'll have enough space to pull the cars inside nighttime so there's no issues okay and they, they will i want to make sure it's clear they do have one extra space that can be an outdoor queue space um except they can't park it there overnight so they do have one extra space and that was a con that was a concern about staff but the uh, business said no problem with parking everything has to be parked inside at night so there's not an accumulation of vehicles so what type of uh, repair work uh, do you plan on doing is it light Mechanical work. Okay, because there is no lift in there. Is that correct? We'll we'll have vehicle lifts so we can do the repairs. We won't be doing any heavy, you know, big construction vehicles and, and things of that nature. So no heavy duty, you know, raising vehicles up. And okay. Any other questions? All right, Neil. All right. On to the conditional use. Um, have Lewis Family Garage um, on 52620, an application for a conditional use permit was submitted for Lewis Family Automotive. Same thing, we were addressing landscaping. Um, no exterior lighting was provided on the south and east side of the building. Staff recommended. Um, it's recommending lighting um, requirements uh, on both sides. Um, ask that tires and trash containers be stored inside. Um, require that the garage be restricted to two working bays because of the limited parking. Um, a Lewis Family Garage is required to have seven. Two, uh, we addressed that. The owner, Thomas J. Buckley, was granted permission from Chick Lumber. Um, Chick Lumber does meet the minimum requirements. Um, we also ask that no overnight parking be allowed. I'm sorry, that no vehicles remain parked outside on the lot overnight. And that's when they're asked to be parked inside the building. Um, ordinance will follow. It'll be a bill. Bill later on the on the agenda. Are there any questions for that? All right. Next issue, Neil. All right. Cat five construction site plan one thirty seven on six one. An application for site plan approval was submitted for Cat five construction will allow construction business with outdoor storage. Mr. Bart Corman, who addressed any issues as far as the landscaping um, and for the uh, fence concerns. So they were uh, required to have um, 12 parking spaces were required. It shows the nine, so they're going to install four additional parking spaces. Um, the proposed area on the east side will have a, a, a site proof fence. Mr. Bart Corman, the answer to sure. question. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's it's pretty much that we do did do the the landscaping uh, rendering uh, by a landscaper that, that uh, the owners and the leasee are proposing to do as well um, with a minimum six foot chain link fence with slats um, instead of the recommendation of planning and zoning of the solid vinyl. Um, so that's 
that's kind of the change from from PNZ to here for our request. And um, it's it's an existing building as well. Uh, was a, was a was a car sales lot, and uh, the owners here on that. Uh, so so uh, putting putting our shrubs and and trees in as well. So uh, we're, we're adding that landscaping and um, pretty simple existing f facility. Answer any questions anybody may have. I don't have a question for you, but I think the council <clears throat> needs to be aware that the current drafted ordinance does address the uh, the type of fencing that they're saying they don't want to do. So if the consensus of the council is not to is to go with the new proposal for the landscaping when the bill comes up, we're going to need to place an amendment with the ordinance. So I think it's probably important to discuss the fencing issue before we get to that point among ourselves to see if we're in agreement that that the ordinance which shows the vinyl fencing is can be replaced with their proposing so i think we need to kind of decide on that before we get to the bill wait a minute i'm sorry i'm confused is there I anybody that's the opposing issue was on changing the other it. no i thought the fencing issue was on not on this building but on the one for Cat 5. Yeah, 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 we're, we're, we're on Cat 5. Yeah, this is Cat 5. Five. Yeah. Okay, okay, five. okay, I'm we're, sorry. No, yep. sorry. Yeah, they recommend conditions where a six foot vinyl <clears throat> site proof fence be installed okay. around the entire lower east <laughs> parking lot out for the outside storage and the dumpster be stored inside the enclosed area at all times because the dumpster, there's no dumpster. Yeah, right. on. So okay. for aesthetic issues, I get it, but I think the concerns were brought up by Alderman Dyer who, who mentioned that the security issues for what is being or proposed to be stored in there um, is a little, it's a little more rigorous with the chain link and the vinyl slats uh, compared to just a straight vinyl. And I, I think that's a valid concern. Go ahead. Uh, I would just add to Add to, add to Alderman Fox's comment is the fact that they do have a proposed site plan, and I would ask if you're going to consider approving the chain link fence with the slats that you also include as part of that amendment, um, incorporating their the installation and maintenance of the landscape plan that they have submitted as well. I think that's going to be the easiest way for us to, um, you know, inspect and enforce i think that's an excellent idea so when we get to that you will address that and go ahead and put in what needs to be added thanks for volunteering that chris so, so i guess the question you start out mr mayor is is there a consensus that w that the board would be willing to switch the uh fencing from what was recommended by pnc yeah is there anybody who opposes the changing of that if it I looks just like that picture, I'm fine with it. I think the consensus is the it's done if it looks like it. Picture. Allow the modification. It's going to be similar to what's outside. <laughs> it's going to be similar to what's outside, like the uh, rest area parking, or not rest area, the uh, commuter parking lot, the, with the green slats and the uh, and the chain link fence that slide down. Right. Yeah, the slats are taller. Hopefully better than that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah hopefully better. it's taller. It's six, you know, minimum six <clears> feet. <throat> Uh, come on, come yeah. on. Yeah, you come can on. see you can see but the, the but the trees the, are gonna cover most of the fence up. <coughs> correct. Right, so to cover obviously we couldn't blow it up any bigger than sure. this, but it'll certainly show how <clears throat> we're gonna be traffic from Interstate seventy, so we'll block as much of that as possible and also east. So it should be a very nice compliment and you can see the amount of greenery that we're gonna planning on placing in there. Excuse me, I'm Mike Boucher. Uh, I own the property. Here Mike, let's uh, just lose we actually have a breakdown on on this drawing of the type of trees that we're putting in. We're not going to put bushes. Uh, it's all going to be trees. Trees are less maintenance. Bushes, you have to mulch and everything else, and that they die. And it's just not really, it's not going to be what Warrington wants anyway. Uh, so these are all the type of trees that we're putting in, and they obviously will grow, and it will pretty much be like Sherwood Forest when they're fully grown. It will completely cover this, any spots on this fence that are exposed. And uh, it's three different types of trees. So I'll let you go get back to it. Nope. Just any other questions? I think Thank we're pretty you. good. to the conditional use CUP-70 
more Cat 5 construction. Um, 6 1 application for a conditional use permit was submitted for Cat 5 construction to allow a construction business with outdoor storage. So we have addressed uh, landscaping. Um, site has adequate lighting, additional parking they're going to install. Um, it was discussed that um, storage equipment would not stand above the site proof fence. And we just, there was a discussion about that uh, the piping is not going to be above that. Uh, it's also stated that shrubs will be placed in front of the fence. We just stated that we're going to have trees. I think a lot of that came from concerns and speculation that it was going to be big boom trucks and what be it. And I think that was addressed pretty readily and quickly right. as we started this. All right. Any um, other questions? Mayor, one of the uh, things that I was concerned about uh, is uh, that is the furthermost to the east as you're coming around the uh, We've got interstate. There's additional pictures. I took pictures from the highway so you can actually see where this lot is from the highway. I think the rendering they gave us is probably one of the best ones. I think we wanted to make sure that uh, things were kept in a reasonably uh, neat, you know, and I understand construction uh, equipment is construction equipment, but we would just prefer as you come around the corner and coming into Warrington. Uh, that yeah. it is attractive. That's the lot itself because they were wanting to surround that. So that's what you see from the service road or from the sign. That's directly on the highway and the next one is actually from across on the other side of the highway. So that's the lot. So yeah, I think the, the building that was put up there is, or uh, redone is fantastic. It looks really nice and we just wanted to keep that on through the uh, parking area for the equipment and so forth and so on. I, I think what Alderman Miller, if you don't mind me jumping in there and springboarding off that, I think that's something we've discussed under five and ten year plan is that the concerns about the aesthetics from the highway and the appearance as we grow as a town, what it, it does appear like when you pull up through the highway. So I, I'm glad you guys addressed it with the greenery and I know that's something we're asking, but it kind of looks like you guys went a little above and beyond and I appreciate that. But, you know, as, at the same time, we're willing to work with security issues that we may have as a city, or you may have, and what we can try and address and maybe amend. I have one further comment. Um, I'm probably going to vote against the ordinance, and it has nothing to do with the fencing. My concern is as we take property that with highway visibility and we turn it into something that doesn't generate sales tax revenue. I think it hurts the city's growth potential in the long run. I mean, we've seen that happen all over town where you have probably one of the prime corners is the corner of Highway 47 and 70 where you have a health clinic in there, which is a nice building, serves the public well, but it doesn't generate sales tax. You know, the property before was used for car sales, so which obviously generates sales tax. So just for my personal philosophy of how we should develop the town, and we're so heavily dependent on sales tax, I'll probably not support the ordinance for that reason. But that has nothing to do with fencing or the landscaping, because you guys applied very well. You addressed the need. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Bert. All I have. Thank you, Neil. Next, we'll hear from Maintenance and Grounds Director Brad Boozy Cruz. Good evening, Mayor and Board. You have my monthly report in front of you. Are there any questions on this monthly report? I would just like to make a comment, Brad. Um, Mark Watson um, did a really nice thing for one of our residents that was trying to um, get their wife down to a gravestone. And Mark went above and beyond. And I would just like to 
give him my thanks. So let him know. I will, I will pass it along, and I know what you're talking about. And uh, we we try to, you know, help everybody that we can. You know, when they come up there, so uh, you know, it was no no problem. We understood, we understood what was going on, so we we try to try to do our best to help everybody out. Yeah, he went above and beyond. So thank him. Well, I think I will. I'll, pass, I, I'll tell him tomorrow. I think about the only complaint we get out of Mark a lot of times if you sit there and talk on talk to him on a personal level is about his back. Not really anything that else goes on. He does go above and beyond. He's one of those quite unsung people that sit in the background and do his job and they'll talk to you when you ask. So. <clears throat> Anybody else have any questions for Brad? Yeah, Brad, I just have one quick question. Um, the lake over at the new park has a lot more growth on it than the lake at Binkley Woods. Is there a, is a treatment or is that something? Yeah, that we, uh, uh, if you've been over there within the last week, it's, uh, we, we, we've been spraying it. Okay. We've got a, uh, a spray and it, it's, it's helping. We're, uh, we've gained about 10 foot around the uh, outside edge. We're, we've got to get the boat from the treatment plant and we're going to uh, put the uh, rig in there and do our spraying from the boat. I think we can get a little, little bit more than what we can. We can get about the 30 foot out. So we're, we're work, work, working on that uh, on that problem right now. Okay. It just it takes a little bit. Yeah, I know some of the people who go fishing, you know, aren't too crazy about the growth because, you know, they, sometimes it's hard to cast. So I just wanted to know if that was being addressed. Thank you, Brad. No, no problem. Any other questions or comments? All right. Thank you, Brad. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from our building commissioner, Mike Cross. Or maybe not. <laughs> Are you mic on? <laughs> not for sure where he's at. Oh, he's here. Okay, I think I'm here now. Good evening, <laughs> Mayor and Board. Hi, Mike. Well, hello, Mike. <laughs> Welcome home. I think you got Mike's monthly report ahead of you, in front of you. If uh, there's any questions, you could probably ask him at this time. No. <clears throat> Mike, you're getting it kind of easy tonight. You there, Mike? We have a few little proposed changes to the residential code. If anybody's got any questions, I can answer about that. Are there any questions or proposed changes? They're moving and shaking in my neighborhood. I hear those nail guns going constantly. Is that a good sign? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. They put a lot of uh, foundations in the ground last month or two mm -hmm. and now they're catching up um, trying to get their workforce in, in line they're still having problems um, with getting construction personnel well we don't have any trade schools close by to teach them yeah that's correct any other questions or comments on the changes to the international residential code amendments Mike, you got it easy tonight. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank Have you. Good evening. Next, we'll hear from the Chief of Police, Larry Eller. Good evening. I just got one item for you tonight, and that's the monthly report, if you have any questions. You get off easy, too. <laughs> I mean, thank you. No odd questions of what does this mean or what is that? I so. asked my odd question. So I'm going to refrain from <laughs> very Yeah, I know. I'm going to refrain from yeah, very soon. Ask another one. Ask another one. See if you can catch them up there. Only one per month, right? That's right. One per month. <laughs> All right. Time for bills or ordinances. I will entertain a motion for the first reading of bill number 25-2020. So moved. Second. Second. Fence Alderman Dyer, I think I'm going to go with them. 
Motion made by Alderman Delaware, seconded by Alderman Crump. An ordinance regarding the vacation of a utility easement and dating said track to Geraldine Murphy. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading and passage of Bill Number 25-2020. No move. Second. Who's, second. who's the first one? Alderman Alderman Gary Miller. Miller. Alderman Miller, seconded by Alderman Schultz. An ordinance regarding the vacation of a utility easement and dating said track to Geraldine Murphy. Roll call vote. Alderman Schultz. Yes. Alderman Crump. Yes. Alderman Dyer. Yes. Alderman Auk. Yes. Alderman Miller. Yes. Alderman Deloy. Yes. Motion passes, or bill passes 6-0. My apologies. I'll entertain a motion for first reading of bill number 26-2020. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Deloy, seconded by Alderman Dyer. A zoning ordinance as authorized under section 405.390 of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrington, Missouri, approving a site plan for Warren County Handicapped Services located at 26321 Dry Fork Road. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading and passage of Bill Number 26-2020. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Dyer, second by Alderman Miller. A zoning ordinance as authorized under section 405.390 of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrenton, Missouri, approving a site plan for Warren County Handicap Services located at 26321 Dry Fork Road. Roll call vote. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Dyer? Yes. Alderman Ock? Before I stay, let me make one more comment. During the course of this whole thing, I have not talked to any of the other aldermen on the board about a position regarding Warren County Handicap Services. I felt it would be a conflict. My only question, comments have been made relative to the water runoff issue, so I abstain. Okay. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Bill passes by zero with one abstain. There. Bill passes five zero with one abstain. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of bill number 27-2020. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Schultz, seconded by Alderman Crump. A zoning ordinance as authorized under section 405.390 of the Municipal Code of the City of Orange, Missouri, approving a site plan for Lewis Family Garage located at 907 East Veterans Memorial Parkway. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading and passage of Bill Number 27-2020. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alden Deloy, seconded by Alden Dyer. A zoning ordinance is authorized under Section 405.390 of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrenton, Missouri, approving a site plan for Lewis Family Garage located at 907 East Veterans Memorial Parkway. Uh, roll call vote. Alderman Dyer. Yes. Alderman Ock. Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Bill passes 6 0. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of Bill number 28 2020. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Crump, second by Alderman Dyer. An ordinance approving the conditional use permit to allow Lewis Family Garage an automotive repair shop located at 907 East Veterans Memorial Parkway. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading and passage of Bill Number 28 2020. Second. Second. Motion made by Alderman Schultz, second by Alderman Dyer. An ordinance approving the conditional use permit to allow Lewis Family Garage an automotive repair shop located at 907 East Veterans Memorial Parkway. Roll call vote. Alderman Ock? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Dyer? Yes. Bill passes 6 0. Um, Eric, I would just like sure. to give a thank you to Tom and Arlene Buckley, who ran a business, Warren County Glass, at this facility for many years, serving our community. And I look forward to seeing another business there. Not no vacant buildings. So thank you, Tom. We we appreciate what you did for our community all those years. Thank you very much for mm -hmm. recognizing that. I'll entertain a motion for the 
first reading of bill number 29-2020. Is this where the modification is, Chris, or is it on the second yes. one? Yes. With the added modification by our attorney. Uh, so if there's a motion to amend, I would suggest the motion to amend include um, the allowance for the uh, chain link fence with the vinyl slats as proposed by the applicant, the green vinyl slat or the green vinyl slats to go into the chain link fence. Number two, the approval of the the approval of the installation and maintenance of the landscape plan that includes 16 additional trees as submitted by the applicant tonight. And Neil has the two documents that will incorporate to the ordinance. So somebody could just say so moved. So, so moved. moved. Second with those amendments. So we'll go for the approval of not only the original bill, but the added amendments by Alvin Dyer and seconded by Alvin Schultz. The zoning ordinance is authorized under section 405.390 of the Municipal Code of the City of Morton, Missouri, approving a site plan for Cat 5 construction located at 1203 East Veterans Memorial Parkway. Before we get criticized, is that does that meet the standards we need besides reading the uh, yeah, second amendment I mean, again? The, the motion was made to, you know, yes, it does. Okay, thank you. That's all I need to know. I'll entertain a motion for a second reading and passage of bill number 29-2020 as the original bill submitted, as well as the amendment given by our attorney and approved by the board. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alvin Crump, seconded by Alvin Deloy. The zoning ordinance is authorized under section 405.390 of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrenton, Missouri, approving a site plan for Cat 5 construction located at 1203 <coughs> East Veterans Memorial Parkway. Roll call vote. Alderman Miller? No. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Dyer? Yes. Alderman Auk? No. The pass is to a 4-2 vote. Oh. I'll entertain a motion for first reading of bill number 30-2020. So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> Jack, you and I are on the same. I was say, which one do you want to get to? I'm good with whichever. Which one did you record? Okay. Motion made by Alderman Schultz, seconded by Alderman Crump. With the modification to include the I'm chain link fence with the green vinyl slats and to approve the submitted landscaping plan with the additional trees. Is that Correct. sound right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. With the modifications. An ordinance approving the conditional use permit to allow Cat 5 Construction, a construction business located at 1203 East Veterans Memorial Parkway. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading and pass it to Bill number 30-2020 with the modifications as previously mentioned. So moved. Second. second. <laughs> motion made by Alderman Crump, second by Alderman Schultz. An ordinance approving the conditional use permit to allow Cat 5 construction and construction business located at 1203 East Veterans Memorial Parkway. Roll call vote. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Dyer? Yes. Alderman Ock? No. Alderman Miller? No. Bill passes 4 to 2. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of Bill number 31 2020. So moved. Motion made by Alden Dyer, second by Alden Crump. In ordinance amending section 500.320, amendments to International Residential Code of the Municipal Code by deleting over excavation and adding an exception for window cell height. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading and passage of bill number 31 2020. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alden Deloy, second by Alden Schultz. In ordinance amending section 500.320, amendments to International Residential Code of the Municipal Code by deleting over excavation and adding an exception for window sill height. Roll call vote. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Dyer? Yes. Alderman Auk? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Delboy? Yes. Bill passes 6 0. <clears throat> I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of Bill number 32 2020. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Deloy, second by Alderman Dyer. 
An ordinance amending Table 1A titled Speed Limits in Accordance with Chapter 320 of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrenton, Missouri relating to vehicle speed limits. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading and passage of Bill Number 32-2020. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Crump, second by Alderman Dyer. An ordinance amending Table 1-A titled Speed Limits in Accordance with Chapter 320 of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrenton, Missouri relating to vehicle speed limits. Roll call vote. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Dyer? Yes. Alderman Auk? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Bill passes 6-0. I will entertain a motion to close the regular Board of Alderman meeting at this time. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Dyer, second by Alderman Schultz. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Not here any, the majority is aye, therefore we are adjourned.